Hey guys, I'm back and today we're going to talk about what to do if you're losing hair when you're doing keto and intermittent fasting. Okay, well most of the time if you're doing intermittent fasting and keto, you're going to get your hair back. It's going to grow more. But if it doesn't, this is what you need to look at. Um, calories. Okay, if you're not consuming enough calories, if you're going on a low calorie diet, just not consuming enough, you just somehow decided that you're going to do this with a small, real small amount of food and you're not going to have the basic nutrients to feed um, the proteins of the body and the nutrients that help support the proteins. That's going to also affect the thyroid gland and you could lose your hair. So what you want to do is you want to make sure when you start including intermittent fasting, you're at three meals and then you're at two meals, okay, and then you're at one meal, that you have enough um, food that has enough nutrients in it. You want to consume nutrient-dense foods, but make sure it's bigger, okay? But the first nutrient you want to make sure you have enough of is protein. If you're consuming not enough protein, that's probably why you're losing hair. So if you're doing three ounces per meal, then go up to four to five ounces and see if that doesn't just handle it, okay? A lot of times when people start doing this, their hunger goes away and so they just hardly eat, they just barely eat anything. And what's going to happen is like they may start showing signs of nutrition deficiency and they have the situation where they're just not hungry and you know you watch one of my videos where i talked about don't eat if you're not hungry but what i want to clarify about that is that at some point in the day you're going to have to consume some nutrients right and just increase the amount of food that you consume and make sure it fulfills your nutrient requirement because the key thing is we want to make sure we're not never doing a low calorie diet. And the definition of that is not consuming enough calories to meet our uh, nutritional needs. So especially if you're doing uh, foods that are not nutrient dense, you're going to be in trouble with that. So if you start showing signs of hair loss and nail uh, brittleness, then we know and fatigue. So those are really good indicators. Hair, nails, energy level are really good indicators to know that you're uh, getting your nutrients or not, okay, from your food. The other thing is that when you do go through what's called keto adaptation and you're adapting the fat, you need more of certain nutrients. You need B vitamins and minerals, especially potassium. So if you're not consuming those extra added supplements, and you're not consuming seven to 10 cups of vegetables, and you're not consuming nutritional yeast, but your body demands more of these nutrients to make the new cellular machinery, that could be why you're losing your hair. So add some nutritional yeast and minerals, electrolyte powder, and trace minerals, which is, are very, very important. Trace minerals are minerals that are needed in very small amounts that help uh, proteins form in the body. So this is a very vital thing to help your hair, nails, collagen, okay? The other thing I want to mention is that your stomach acid, if you have low stomach acid uh, and you're not able to digest the protein, that could be one reason why it's not ending up in your hair. And the way that you would know if you have low stomach acids is you would have heartburn, indigestion, bloating, and gas, okay? So if you have that, then you need to increase uh, more acid by apple cider vinegar, you can get them in tablets, or betaine hydrochloride or the combination of both. Those two work really, really good. So again, we, um, if you're doing more protein, you know, beef up the protein, no pun intended, um, a good formula would be, would be between 0.36 grams to 0.7 grams times your body weight. So if you weigh 180 pounds, you would times by point uh, three seven, and that would be the very minimum that you would want to consume, and then you would want to go up to uh, 0.7. But again, I'm giving you the the ounces right here because sometimes the grams are confusing, especially if you're trying to measure the food in grams, because you don't want to calculate. Let's say, for example, you have chicken or fish or an egg. You're not looking for the total grams of that food. You're looking for the grams of protein in that meat or animal product or, or product itself not the total grams, big confusion. In other words, the grams of beef, for example, in protein are a lot less than the total grams of what it weighs because you have the fat in there, 
you have the water in there, which is quite a large amount of. So, and you have the collagen and some other things too. All right? Okay, so I hope that helped and thanks for watching. Hey guys, a lot of you already have my book, some of you don't, but this new edition called the New Body Type Guide is an upgrade from my last edition called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. It has 156 images, 378 pages, full glossary. I talk about keto, intermittent fasting, the body types in detail. I have a new stress chapter. I'm going to show you exactly what to eat and a comprehensive FAQ. I put a link down below. Check it out.